Hello and welcome to part two in our enhanced input action tutorial series. In the first part, we just covered the basics of the system and how it works. In this episode though, we're gonna cover a very common mechanic that you see in many video games, which is the hold to interact button. So not only are we gonna show you how to use the hold key and trigger, we're also gonna show you how to implement that with the widget as well to show a progress bar on the screen. So let's get started. So one of the key inputs that we see in video games is the hold to interact key. So let's take a look at how that is achieved. So first of all, I'm going to go into my actions and I'm going to create a new input action. Input, input action. And we we'll call it IA interact. And I don't need to do anything to this because by default, input actions are set to digital booleans. And I'm not going to do triggers or modifiers because that's going to change based upon what key I'm using and what uh, controller I'm using. So I'm going to leave that like that. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to my mapping context by clicking on the mappings, add, and choosing my interact there. Close that one. There you go. So here I'm going to choose what key I want to use. Now, a shortcut for picking a key rather than going through the menu is just to click this little button next to the menu. And then whatever key you push next, it will assign it. So I've pushed E, for example, it will assign the E key for interact. And we can add more keys by clicking a little plus button next to it. And that will add another one. And that one I can choose the gamepad. Um, I don't have my gamepad turned on, but I can just go in here and use face button um, left. Okay. So that'd be like X on the Xbox controller. Now, interact is simple. Okay, that's all we're going to do for now. We're going to come back for this in a second to do the hold. But let's just put it into our uh, player character so you can see it working. So I'm going to do IA interact. And add my event node for my interact. I'm then going to go on triggered and just do a print string for that. And I'll just call this one interacted. Compile, save. So now if I go back to my game, if I push E, we can see it is printing that interacted out. Okay. But I don't want it to do that all the time. And I don't want to do it straight away. I want to hold the button down first before it does that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our context. And on the E, I'm going to go to triggers and hit the plus element. And in the index, you're going to get a load of default ones you've already given to you. And this will suffice for a lot of your keys, pushes. So we've got hold and hold and hold and release. These two are the ones we're looking at mostly here. So hold means it will just hold it down and it will fire if you're still holding the thing down. But if you do hold and release, it won't fire until you release the key. We want to choose hold. So I'm going to click on hold. And if you expand open again, you have settings about how the hold will work. So hold time threshold is how long you have to hold the button for in order for it for to fire. So I'm going to change it from one second and change it to five seconds. So you've got plenty of time to see this working. We then got some further information about whether it's one shot. So in other words, does it fire only once um, once it's met the threshold? And I'm going to do yes, tick that be one shot. Affected by time dilation. So if you've got slow-mo in your game and, it's, and you want to affect by that, you can turn that on too if you like. And the activation threshold is basically how much does the button have to be pushed to handle this. Um, being a keyboard that I've got, it should be fine no matter what I do with that. So hold will do that job there. So now I'll take now five seconds for it to fire. So let me just go ahead and show you that in game. I'm going to hold down E now. One, two, three, four, five. Interacted. Okay. So I only fired once because of that one shot and I had to hold it down for five seconds. So really cool. Now, what's really good about this is that you can actually tie a, this to a UI element too as well. You can actually output how long you've held the key down uh, for. So if I go back into my IMCD uh, default, you can see, uh, not to say my player character, if I open up the interaction event node, you can see we've got elapsed seconds and triggered seconds. We can use these nodes to communicate to our widget. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to add a widget to the screen. And I'll do a very simple, basic widget. I'm not going to do anything fancy. We'll do interact message. 
And in here, we're going to have a uh, progress bar. Actually, let's do the canvas panel first of all. And a progress bar. And I'll just put that center and change the size of that to be 500. And it's position minus 200. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so we want this bar to fill up like this when we're holding the key down. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I want to trigger this to that input. Now, one thing that's really nice about enhanced input actions is that on widgets, you can actually use this same input nodes. So if I go IA interact, I can actually put that on here too. Now, what's really good about this is now I can go into here and put in my progress bar. And so when it started, I'm going to set my progress bar to be visible. So set visibility to visible. If it is hidden, or, uh, sorry, if it's cancelled or completed, we're going to change its visibility to hidden. And next on um, ongoing, I want it to update the progress bar's percentage. So if I get out the progress bar, set percent and plug that into the trigger there and so this is going to output the elapsed seconds so how long has it been since it started the interaction and so i'm going to take the elapsed seconds and i'm going to normalize this value because we're going for five seconds i'm going to drag this out and do normalize to range and in range max i'm going to choose five for five seconds and what that's going to do is whatever the value is in here, it's going to convert it down to a normalized value between 0 and 1. We need that because progress bars only read values and display values between 0 and 1. So we do this to basically squish it down, and then we put that into in percent. So I'm going to change the default of this to be hidden. So I'm going to go down here and default that to hidden. Compile and save. So what we'll do now is add it to the screen. I'm just going to go add it to the screen and begin play. Create widget. Obviously, this would be part of your main heads up display. And we'll do interact message. And we'll do add to viewport. So I push the E key. Oh, interesting. The bar isn't moving. But it is going to disappear as expected. Let's take a look at what I did wrong. And go back to interact message. And yep, so I've got the set percent happening when they're triggered. So it's not updating or changing until it gets to be triggered at which point it's too late, it's going to be removed. So as I said, that needs to be on ongoing. That's my fault. Compile, save that. And now we can look at that in action. And you can see the bar now appearing. And now it's interacted. So you can do nice, simple interactions with some UI on the screen. And that's one of the nice things about Enhanced Impact System is that you can use the same node on, in, on widgets as well, which, as you've come to see, is a lot, lot nicer in handling how we make our games interactable, especially with gamepads later on. So there you go. That is our hold and release button for the interactions. In the next part, we're going to look at corded actions. This is when we combine two keys together to get a unique outcome. Uh, you see this in many games, and uh, like with uh, gamepad games specifically, but we're going to take a look at that next time, and you can watch our next video right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month, as well as take part in our creator challenge, as well as many other exclusive benefits. Thank you so much for all the patrons for supporting the channel. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.